Oh. I'm Charlie State, but you may know me as Sardine Soda Bread. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not sure. Go. Oh, well, thanks for sharing that. Oh, brilliant. En enjoy the thanks, show. Man. It looks thanks. like it's going to be fun. So, time now is 9.35. As we've been hearing this morning, the comedian Mike Yarwood has died at the age of 82. Yeah, he became a household name in the 1960s and 70s for his impersonations of former prime ministers and famous figures from the world of politics and showbiz. Let's take a look at some of those classic moments. Well, good evening and welcome to the sky. Now, pay attention because I've got my eye on Hello, Betty, Jessica. It's Daddy on the telly again. I'd just like to make one criticism, and I think I've said this before. I said it at the Brighton conference. You're doing far too much of Ted. After all, he's quite capable of making a fool of himself without your help. <laughs> Actually, Maggie asked me at the House of Commons Christmas party if I would kiss her under the mistletoe. I said I wouldn't kiss her under anaesthetic. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. I'm now going to sing a song with my little boy. Climb up on my knee, sunny boy. These? They're more like brass bed knobs. <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know whether you know me, but I used to be Dennis Healy. Well, I got rather fed up of being a silly billy, so I decided to become a chunky punky. Uh, good evening. Um, <laughs> Now, as you know, this is my very first Christmas message to the nation. Uh, and I would like to say that my mother's husband and I wish we were very happy. Oh, uh, uh, impressionists and comedians. Uh, I'm joined now by John Colshaw and, and Alastair McGowan, both sort of leading in their field, both influenced um, by Mike's work. Good morning to both of you. Thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Alastair, perhaps I could start with you. I believe you uh, met Mike Yarwood. Uh, what, what was it like to meet him? What was he like? Uh, I met him, it was 30 years ago actually, I was just sort of starting out <clears throat> and Mike was uh, being tempted into some, some sort of comeback uh, which he didn't really want to do. He was very generous though, we did impressions in front of him, uh, the younger generation and he just said uh, something like, you, you know, you're a lot uh, much more interested in vocal accuracy, you're, you're much more accurate in fact than I was, which surprised me. Uh, but he just said, I, I was always interested more in, in character, caricature and also in the physicality of the person and I think that's something that John would agree with and John's very good at as well, is that he really did take on the whole persona physically of people absolutely brilliantly. Uh, his Larry Grayson, his Bruce Forsyth, his Frankie Howard, the way he transformed himself in a way that inspired Phil Cool as well to then do the same thing. But Mike was the first, he set the bar and uh, he set it very, very high. Yeah, John, do you want to pick up on that? Yes, uh, absolutely. Hi there, Alistair. Agreeing with all of that, he inspired us so much. And the way Mike took all of those little foibles of the characters that none of us realised we'd noticed and he exaggerated them and he made them hilarious and it just translated through so vividly Saturday Night Television on BBC One in the golden age of TV. And Mike really did set the bar. He was the first to have all the technology, the multi-cameras, the split screens and his instincts, how, how smart Mike was in knowing how to use all that and make these vivid, beautiful, wonderful shows. It really did. It set the bar and kicked the door open for everyone who's followed since. Yeah, John, it's interesting, isn't it? Because yeah, absolutely, you, you know, that moment in time, anyone who's a certain age will remember those Saturday Night shows, and they were absolutely the thing to watch, and we were all in awe. And then something changed, didn't it? What, was it that it, it, he's, he spoke of his own sort of frustrations about what he did, and was the, the audience was changing, what we, what we kind of wanted to watch? What, what happened? Yes, I, I think that the, the 70s and the 80s, culturally, you know, they clashed together like tectonic plates almost. Uh, comedy driven by the politics became more aggressive. In came the so-called alternative comedy, spitting image and so on. And I think Mike just felt at that moment that um, he'd done what he wanted to do and he just thought he'd, he'd step back. It was his choice. He could have carried on if he wished to. But um, in a similar way to... When Ronnie Barker described the moment when he retired, because he'd done everything he wanted to do. I think it was a similar thing for Mike. He just knew his moment and he, he stuck to that. Um, and Alistair, it, I mean, it is interesting that looking back to those times, just looking at the Christmas Day audience for his show back in 1977, 21.4 million people watched that. I would guess there will be some people this morning, quite a lot of people, who actually don't know much about Mike Yarwood. It is a different generation, but in his day, he was huge. 
Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's something that is a cursory for impressionists. Um, I'm sure John would say the same and Rory Bremner too, that our work doesn't get repeated. Uh, so he's never been repeated in the way that Morecambe and Wise were and the two Ronnies were, because in a way what we do is topical, whether it's political or not, it's of its moment. And so, um, you know, if you, younger people were watching it now, they wouldn't not only, would they not only know who uh, Mike Yard is, they wouldn't know a lot of his, his victims, if you like, Eddie Waring, Brian Clough, who we used to do so brilliantly, and my own personal favourite uh, was his step to and some way do one voice to one camera and then he turned the other way and do that right down the barrel that way and then back down the barrel that way and then back down the barrel and it was absolutely superb timing wonderful material beautiful to watch but yes uh, he's not as well known because he's not repeated in the same way but in his day young people uh, yeah 21 million he was as big as anybody and uh, we just loved watching him and it wasn't really about political satire either I was 9 or 10 years old watching Mike I didn't know what satire was he was just really really funny and reliably funny um, John, we, what we know now, of course, is that he had a lot of struggles behind the scenes, uh, didn't he? It, you know, he, he struggled with nerves, for example, which would, I would never have known, obviously. But do you, do you think when you are an impressionist, and I ask this cautiously, you're pretending to be someone all the time? I mean, it's like acting. It's, it's similar in a way. But being himself, there was always that bit at the end of the show when he said, well, what do you say? And this is me, didn't he? Yes, that's right. I suppose that was uh, classic light entertainment on a Saturday night. You finish on a song. Uh, and that, was, that became rather a signature on Mike's shows. His own singing voice was sort of leaning towards Sinatra, and the influence was there. And that was the, uh, that, that was the close of the show. You know, he'd sing When You're Smiling, and the credits would roll, and then it was Match of the Day. Perfect Saturday night TV. Well, they're very good memories, and uh, everyone time. gets a chance, as you've both alluded to, to seeing some of his work again. So it's been lovely hearing from both of you as well. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Well, it's time to get another look at the sport. Big day. Big day in France. Mike is there in Marseille. What? what? Mike? Mike? Hello? Hello? Is he having his breakfast? Well, is that the problem? You Looking for the appetite. menu. <laughs> You were no, Charlie talked about his sardine sourbread earlier with Matt and Saturday Kitchen. Got me in the mood for seafood. It's never too early, is it? Especially this time of day on Saturday. The restaurants and bars in this fan park right by the beach in Marseille has really got going this morning now. Really bustling. And last night, this was 